Well, it's the top of the hour. Good day to you all. Thank you for joining us. Let's get started with today's IBT online webinar. It's Webinar Wednesday again. The Go Global webinar series continues, and today we bring you Doing Business in Brazil. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be today, and also thank you to those who are listening to this webinar on demand. So wherever you are, whatever time of day or night it is with you, you are welcome. My name is John Worthington. I am CEO here at IBT Online, and I'm your host here today. I have the huge pleasure of introducing our Go Global webinar series, and today we're all about doing business, successful business, in Brazil. We're passionate about our Go Global webinar series. It's all about knowledge. It's all about understanding. And it's in this fast-moving, ever-changing online and international world. There's always lots to learn and to keep up to date. And today's Go Global webinar is a great example. Well, it's doing business in Brazil. Now, before we get started, I always spend a minute on housekeeping. So as you know, what to expect from the online global webinar series. And for those of you who are coming back, well, welcome back. You know the drill. In today's webinar, it's one of the Go Global webinar series, all about helping you grow your sales, your brands, and your business globally. The Go Global webinar series is now three years old. So there's a rich catalog of recorded webinars which are available to you on demand. And those are available on our website at www.ibt. .onl. And for future webinars, we have webinars scheduled going forward. Just look for the backslash webinars forward. This webinar will be approximately 45 minutes long. A brief introduction from myself, then I will be handing over to my colleague Susanna. Today, there will be three polls and there will be questions. There will be questions, and on your screen there, you can see questions, that box there. Please don't hesitate to tick it, open it up, submit your questions. Um, we will be answering them. There's also a chat box if you want to chat, please use it. And today, innovation for the first time, there's a handout. We'll be coming back to that later, but we're very pleased to be um, able to provide you with handouts. And at the end of this webinar, there will be a brief um, doing business in Brazil survey. So you'll be able to find out more and more about Brazil. And finally, we are, of course, pleased to be able to provide you with this webinar, this recording, and slide deck on Friday, which will be prepared and sent to you. So now sit back and kick back and enjoy yourselves, have some coffee or tea or whatever it is, as we get into the subject of doing business in Brazil. Now I'd like to introduce my co-presenters today. We have three uh, uh, joining us today. We have Fabio. Fabio is the Managing Director of Trade BRZ. Fabio has 35 years of experience in business development with top international corporations such as Chemical Bank, Johnson & Johnson & DuPont. Fabio has also worked as an MBA professor, Sao Paulo um, and Allentown, Lehigh, that's in Pennsylvania, as well as the other end of Pennsylvania in Pittsburgh. A program for Brazil between 2005 and 2007. Since 2001, Fabio has engaged in representation of US states in Brazil and private corporations working with more than 250 different companies per year to promote their exports and the interaction of South American companies to the USA. Now, Susanna. Susanna is the IBT Online Chief Content Officer and in that capacity has taken leadership at IBT Online for all things related to content. Susanna is responsible for all of our digital media and multi-channel publications and brings them all together and curates a huge wealth of international online research and knowledge. And of course, Brazil is one of these subjects and today. So do go check out the IBT Online white papers, eBooks, infograms, videos, and of course, the webinars all dedicated to helping you grow and succeed internationally, your sales, your brands and business, and do that online and do that globally. Susanna has spent her career working for businesses internationally in the US and New York, across France and Germany, as well as in the UK, and speaks German, French, Dutch and English. Samantha, Samantha, 
is one of our online business development managers in based in wonderful, beautiful Miami. And that is down in Florida, the gateway to South America. Samantha is an international citizen, as well as a digital native and business development professional. Samantha has a multinational background, an Argentinian American, studied, completed college and her master's in international business in Florida, and has traveled widely, of course, including across South America. And she speaks, works in several languages. So a moment to introduce IBT Online. IBT Online. Uh, a privately held company, we're a US business and a European business. IBT stands for International Business and Technology Online. We've been in business since 2002, so that's over 16 years of helping companies succeed internationally. And we're proud to have completed that work and have over 400 companies working through the online global program and that's over a thousand programs delivered and delivering currently, including, of course, many in Brazil. And at IBT Online, we understand the challenges of doing business in Brazil. And we're here today to share that information with you and with the team. So with that, now I'm going to hand over to Susanna, and I thank you very much indeed. Susanna, are you there? Thank you for that introduction, John, and uh, it's great to be today uh, with, uh, with everybody talking about business in Brazil and with, uh, with Fabio and Samantha, and I do look forward to answering also questions at the end. But here's our agenda for today. I thought we'd give a sort of big overview bus business landscape picture of Brazil, and Fabio is going to really talk us through that. And then I'm going to take the microphone back and talk about the online environment specifically and how Brazilians engage on the web and, and what Brazilian businesses typically do. We're going to look at some business opportunities and then look at some best practices online and, uh, and, what, and share some of our experiences of, um, of, 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 of companies, particularly U.S. companies, but other companies as well, who have set up in Brazil and some of the things they found, some of the experiences they found. So we're going to start then, as I said, on Brazil business landscape, and I'd really like to pass the microphone on to Fabio. You can introduce uh, his company and then talk about the sort of Brazil overview. Fabio? Hmm, perhaps we have a microphone issue. I think we might have a microphone issue with Fabio. Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can, Fabio. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is Fabi Yamada. Uh, I'm speaking directly from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And uh, I'll go over my slides. And uh, if there are any questions, I'll be more than happy to, to answer those at the end. And uh, Susana, you're going to hand out the slides to the, to the attendees, right? Absolutely. Okay, so in just case I go too quick, you can read through and uh, eventually uh, we can solve those uh, those questions later on. Okay, first slide, please. Fabia, second? Yes, yes. Yeah, how can I move the slides down? I have moved it for you. It should have moved. Uh, okay. I am on the slide that says Central America, one of the largest export okay. markets for USA companies. Yes. Uh, well, as you can see, uh, Brazil is one of the largest markets in the world, $32, thirty billion dollars in exports. And uh, Brazil has been one of the the closest uh, markets uh, to the U.S. Uh, the U.S. Ex uh, imports a lot of uh, commodities from Brazil, and um, uh, we are dependent upon several technological goods and services exported from the U.S. That I'm I'm going to to uh, go over some details in in some of the slides. Uh, next, please. Okay, so uh, if we look at the figures, Brazil is the is the eighth largest economy in the world, 
it was the sixth and now it's the eighth uh, because of the deep recession we have been through but uh it's a massive country so the 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 territorial uh the the brazilian territory is as large as the the continent the continental us so uh so flying from uh from the 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 south to the north may take like uh, four hours by plane. We have a population of 280 million people and 8 million people and um, a G G GDP per capita of $8,600. Unemployment rate, though, is still pretty high, 13%. And uh, we carry international reserves of $356 billion. That's enough uh, to support to support any potential foreign exchange crisis. Uh, next slide, please, Susanna. Okay, so GDP in the past two years uh, have been very, very low. Uh, in 2016, it was negative in minus two. In 2017, it was plus one. And uh, GDP in 2018, with the oil price increase, it's going to be around 2.5%. Inflation, though, is completely under control for the past three years, and today is around 2.5%, and we expect to keep at that level. The target is 4%, but the lower the better. And uh, uh, most of the attendees have heard about uh, some political issues we had in the past like uh, political scandals like corruption etc but we are going through a peaceful transition so there there's no military coup we see that the militaries are not interested in taking over uh, power by force so uh, brazil has been a, a democracy for let's say 50 years and uh, looks like it's going to be kept that way so all everything is working really well we have the judici judiciary our legal system works perfectly and um, believe it or not uh, we have uh, uh, once a very popular leader president lula in jail so most of the leftists in this country and in some other countries doubted that uh, such a popular president who was once called the man by President Obama was going never to jail, but uh, he's there. So uh, things, uh, the the environment is is much more, uh, much more, much more, uh, let's say, progressive these days. And uh, we see the trend of privatization. So what we can see is that uh, looking at uh, the environment, uh, we are all confident that the degree of confidence in the economy has grown uh, tremendously in the past 12 months. And uh, the stock market <clears throat> proves that in January and February, we had record growth. <clears throat> Even though we had a, a slow bump in the past few weeks because of uh, some, 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 some strikes, uh, because of the oil prices, I mean the diesel prices, uh, so this is going to be temporary, and the country will regain uh, growth within the next couple of months. So very likely, we'll see at the end of 2018 a growth, a GDP growth of approximately 2.5%. Next slide, please, Susanna. So uh, let's talk about business culture. So you can read through this, and and uh, Brazil Brazil is a Latin country, so uh getting close to each other is very 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 uh usual in business uh so handshakes are very common uh, uh so we hug each other at all the time and um uh, we uh, foreigners should not be let's say uh be uh, should be aware that uh, this is a, a tradition here and um sometimes if 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 people are not that comfortable in hugging and and kissing in 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 getting too close that's fine as well a good hand, handshake is is good enough 
uh, 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 Looking at the Brazilian geography and population, most of the population live in big cities. So traffic can be a challenge if you're moving from one place to the other. So all the times that we have companies uh, visiting Brazil for business, we end up allowing at least one hour in traffic time from one meeting to the other. Even though we know it could take like uh, 20 to 30 minutes, commuting time, we allow extra time so that people uh, don't get to the next appointment too late. Uh, even though in the past we used to say that, okay, let's say being late for 30 minutes is the standard here, not anymore because uh, we're, we have to do more, Brazilian businessmen have to do more in less time. So. Uh, we have long hours. Usually we start at nine and then our days end at seven or eight. Uh, we we have like a business lunches that may take like a one to two hours, but oftentimes we go out for lunch for 30 minutes and come back to the office. So, but um, for visitors, what we suggest is that the meetings should be scheduled to start by nine and end by five and uh, allowing some extra time for, let's say, for the last meeting. So eventually the last meeting could end around, let's say, 6, 6.30. So that should should be fine. The first meetings are usually brief, uh, at least, uh, well, you could say it was a good meeting if you end up spending from 30 minutes to one hour. I think that's that's a good number because usually you spend like 15 minutes just to warm up, just to get to know each other, just to get to know about the company, and then you engage in business. So one hour is an approximate good time for the first contact, and eventually it could go up to one hour and 30 minutes, or eventually two hours if the conversation is fluid and the content is satisfactory to both sides. Next slide, please. Thank you. So body language. Uh, we we know that body language is is necessary, and uh, eye contact is necessary as well. So we know if things are going well, if you can look at, in the eyes of your your business partner, and then you realize there is interest in the conversation. So. Keeping eye contact is something uh, good for business. You're not challenging the other person. You're not uh, bringing any 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 bad connection to that to that uh, to the conversation. Uh, I mentioned here that you have to bring lots of business cards because all the time when you meet somebody, the first thing you do is hand is hand is to hand out your business card so that people can read your name, know where you're from, and eventually keep your contact information for future use. And uh, WhatsApp, for instance, is very common here in Brazil. If you include your cell phone number in your business card and if you download WhatsApp, so this is going to be a more, let's say, a modern way of communication. So people can call you if they have any question or eventually you can be in contact on, on both sides. And WhatsApp has been wonderful uh, for business here in Brazil. You set up your meetings, you you, you try to locate where your, your potential business partner is. So everything really works well. Um, <clears throat> So, and then get used to lots of strong coffee. Yes, uh, we usually, when we, uh, we, we have meetings, the first question is, would you like to have some water and coffee? And then you say, yeah, I'm fine. Yes, please, coffee. Sometimes people offer uh, a cup of tea, and, and that's fine if you take it or not. People won't be offended if you say, no, I'm fine. Uh, I just want water. And, and that's it. So it's part of the uh, the the polite way of doing business here. Uh, we have sometimes 
lunch meetings and uh, this is often uh, eventually if you want to get to know more of your business partner partner you can engage in to lunch or eventually invite for dinner so you have more time to discuss in a less pressured environment so you can uh, spend more time and speak to each other more freely uh, we we are informal uh, most of the time we are not wearing ties except lawyers and judges uh, so ties have been abolished even for people in the banking industry but uh, we usually uh, uh, try to wear like a sports coat in business meeting just just to be nice so we we if if you want to come to brazil and don't want to make mistakes just dress uh conservatively so a blazer or uh, a white blouse or a white shirt wouldn't hurt at all uh language english is spoken by just 20% of the executives and out of the 20% of the executives who claim to speak English you may say that 15 let's say 50% of those do speak fluent English so uh English could be a barrier but all the all the printed material that you bring to Brazil please bring them in English uh, don't bring them in Spanish uh, we prefer to have all the literature in English. That works best. People are more used to read we, uh, English than than Spanish. And also remember that if you speak, if you're a native Spanish speaker, you can understand Portuguese. But if you're not a native speaker, there there are going to be some challenges in understanding Portuguese. They are close but not identical languages. So and 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 when the other side, the potential Brazilian partner, realizes that you can speak some Spanish, they'll try to switch Portuguese into something like Spanish that becomes Portuñol. That's that's a weird language that nobody understands at the end. So might as well start the conversation in English and then try to see if 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 the conversation goes well but if you are a native spanish speaker that's that's more favorable otherwise if you want we can provide you with uh, translators or interpreters for the business meetings while the companies are in brazil uh, if you have nothing to say but uh, if you want to break the ice uh, in a conversation just talk about family uh music soccer but try to stay out of politics try to avoid comments on poverty religion that's something really really that doesn't make sense in conversations and um so the conversation can become polarized and you want to avoid that for sure and uh in the first let's say meetings we never ask about ages uh, salary, how much that person is making, how much their colleagues are making, or eventually if the person is married or not. Uh, we perceive that as too intrusive to the other person. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we Brazilians negotiate with people, not companies. So we create sort of a bond. So we we get close to a person, we get to know that person really well, and we create a relationship. That's why it's important to come down to Brazil, meet face to face, have several conversations, uh, several uh, exchange of uh, messages through uh, WhatsApp or Facebook. That works really well, but sometimes things do not go well, and uh, the, the contact person that you met once is not the decision maker, and um, so the, the the conversation about closing a deal may take forever. So it's 
part of the deal. Uh, you have to rely on the other side. You can start pushing, and um, and 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 try to get a feeling of uh, how the business is is moving internally in the other person's company. So eventually, if you want to go one step above and talk to the director or the president of the company, please make a make your your contact aware that you're going to do that. Otherwise, that person may be offended and and try to break the deal without you knowing. So it's important that you create this this good relationship so that the conversation is fluid. Sometimes uh, people have limitations of time to make a decision, and um, and that's the reason why the decision is not being made, not because they are not interested. So you have to understand, you have to 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 go over the conversation and learn what's going on. So we, even though we are like, uh, let's say, informal, we have a very good relationship uh, with our bosses. The way we do business here is very hierarchical. Uh, so uh, you have to pass the information to the supervisors, to the to the managers, to the directors, to the president, so that they are aware and they have their blessing on the deal that you're about to close. So it may take time. That depends on 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 the type of deal that you're involved. If you're talking on something digital, maybe the decision is going to be faster because of the 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 nature of the industry. If it's like a, a metalworking a company that you're dealing with, this may take like um, more time um, uh, to finish the deal. Next slide, please. Hang Thank on, you. can I jump in? I'm sorry to jump in. What about a poll? It looks to me as though it's poll number one. Um, so please, uh, before we move on, um, we'd like to ask uh, some questions. We'd love your participation. I'm going to launch a poll. Here we go. Now, please. Everybody, uh, share with us, do you already do business in Brazil? Are you already doing business in Brazil? Is it yes, directly? How about within market partners or online? Or within market partners and online? It's multiple. Or are you thinking about it? Please, let me give you some feedback. The largest single line, guess what? It's thinking about it, a full 60% are saying that they're thinking about doing business in Brazil. Well, thank you for that. That's extremely interesting. 20% are saying yes, they're in there with a direct subsidiary. Well done. Uh, less than that, we've got in-market partners. Um, we have nobody saying uh, yes with in-market partners and online. So there's online 7%, which is very interesting. Look, I want to thank you for that information. We wish you all success whether you're there already or thinking about it. I'm going to, that is the horn to shut the first poll and hand back. So Susanna, over to you. And Fabio, thank you very much. That was, that was fascinating, uh, very interesting. Thank you again. I'm closing the poll and over to you, Susanna. Thanks, John. That is interesting uh, statistics, actually. Very, very uh, different from us. I'm going to try and speed it up a little bit so we don't. We have some time for questions at the end as well. We go straight into talking about Brazil online. As Fabio was saying, it's the largest economy in South America, and it's seriously the largest internet base as well. With over 200 million people, 66%, two-thirds of the people in Brazil are online a lot and uh you know they're online using it every day all the time through their webs through their 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 telephones through their computers laptops and it's uh so they're, they're very active internet users what's really very specific about them which really stands out for someone who's looking on a global perspective is that brazilians spend a lot of time on the web and what do they do they spend a lot of time communicating they are like some of the kings of social media and YouTube. Um, and in fact, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal a few years ago that said, Brazil, king of social media. And uh, certainly this is reflected in some of the time that's spent there. I'm gonna drill down into that a little bit. 
here we just have a, these are some screenshots of an infographic produced by Samantha on uh, Brazil online environment. And I, I sort of took up particularly about the social media part of it. So as I said, Brazilians spend an ordinary, extraordinary amount of time on the internet every day. They spend nearly four hours a day just on social media. Now, you know, four hours a day. This is the second highest in social media spend in the world, uh, uh, by the way. And I think a lot of that is also, uh, as Fabio mentioned, this use of WhatsApp and, and the use of WhatsApp, not just to communicate in terms of sort of, you know, for friends and family, but even for business. And you can have multiple, multiple groups of WhatsApp. One person, I was speaking to someone in, 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 in Latin America recently, and they were saying, well, I, you know, just looking at my WhatsApp group, I've got over 50 different WhatsApp groups. You know, there's some for family, some for friends, and then there's all these ones for some from my suppliers, some from my distributors, some from my prospects. I've got, you know, huge numbers of sections of different types of WhatsApp groups. So that's clearly one of the major points about it. The other point about um, that, that it's very characteristic of Brazil online is how much YouTube they watch. Uh, they absolutely love to watch video and spend there's an average time spent on YouTube is over 20 minutes a day. Uh, that is nearly three times what the U.S. watches on average. I just love YouTube. So, again, very, very interesting. And uh, I guess a third one, again, very interesting for business is the importance of LinkedIn. Now, Fabio, for example, has got over a thousand people on his LinkedIn account, He's a very active LinkedIn proponent. And this is certainly shared by many business people in Brazil. So those 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 sort of you know nuggets of information will help you define your online strategy, your marketing strategy, and your website strategy when you're looking at going uh, websites and social media marketing in Brazil. So a large amount of time spent on the web, big on YouTube, big on LinkedIn, and very much communication orientated with WhatsApp, but also with Facebook and so on, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, and so on. Um, John mentioned that we have a little bit of innovation today. There are handouts uh, of this infographic on the web uh, on, in, during this webinar. And I'm not sure um, uh, you should be able to get it on your screen. It should say handout and says Brazil's online uh, environment. And you should be able to pick that up as a JPEG whenever you want uh, for, for the, um, uh, and pick that out, out of the, out of the um, chat box on the side there. Um, so that is the online environment infographic as well. I think one of the points that we wanted to make as well about websites in Brazil is that you can't just stick a couple of Brazil Portuguese pages on your US website and think people in Brazil are gonna find me. That's not how just websites work. That's not how Brazilians will find you, understand you, recognize you, trust you. Uh, so in fact, what you have to have is some kind of a localized website. And what we mean by localized website is, is really one that fits into the Brazilian environment. The best way I know to explain that really is to talk about how search engines work. Now, Google has over 90% market share in Brazil. So, you know, that's the search engine to go for. No, don't, don't make your life complicated. That's the one to go for. Now, each Google, Google Brazil, for example, is very different from Google USA, is very different from Google Mexico or Google Portugal. It's a very different Google because Google is market specific and client focused. It is market specific to Brazil. So to be recognized as a Brazilian website, you really need a Brazilian domain name. That's .com, .br. You also need it to be in Brazilian Portuguese. You've got to fulfill a whole bunch of criteria. You have to host it locally so people can upload and download so that you are relevant to the local searcher. An example I can give you here is just the difference between Portuguese Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese. Now we had a client that we made a website for, he's in the train business. And so we looked to see which are the best words that he supplies to the train industry. Which are the best words, the key words that we need to use? Well, if we were just Portuguese, we would use the word comboio. 
But if we're in Brazil, we need we need to use the word tram. Because only 5% of people in Brazil would type into Google Comboio when they're looking for something about trains. The opposite for Portugal. And this and 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 and, and Google, which is a dominant search engine in both markets, both Brazil and Portugal, recognizes that and says, no, you're not relevant for the Brazilian market because you're talking about Comboio. And you, you're not relevant for the Portuguese market because you're looking at Trem. So that's an example of how a search engine is both market specific and client focused. And therefore your websites need to have that same premise, that same focus on your end client. Remember, the website is not how you think it should look. It's how your clients and prospects want it to look. So I've grouped together just again in terms of timing. We're going to rip through this to try and give some more time to the, uh, the case studies and questions. But just looking at some of the major, major aspects of a localized website for Brazil, I marked down our 10 criteria that we use when localizing a, 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 a website. So if a website is to be built in Brazil, it needs to have these 10 criteria. It needs, to, of course, to be fully adapted to local language, but that's only one aspect of a localized website. It has to be mobile enabled because Brazilians access the, the internet majority by their telephone. Telephone penetration rates in Brazil are 115%. So there are more phones than people. Uh, you know, and, and, and over, over, you know, way over 50% of them, as you saw from that first slide, access the internet through their mobile phones. So obviously mobile enabled, obviously hosted locally, so you can upload and download quickly. Obviously full regulatory requirements. So those are the 10 aspects that we regard essential for website localization. Susanna, that was great. Thank you very much indeed. And please, everybody, as you're looking at that list and as you're grabbing the handout, can I ask you as well to participate in my second poll? Right, please, lean forward. Tell me what you're, you think of this, launching. Here we go, localized websites. As Susanna was pointing out, websites for Brazil or even other markets. How are you all doing? Is it main exports? Do you look at it as main exports and perhaps only in a few export markets? Are, are you thinking about it or is the answer a straight no? It might be just a localized site for your own home market and nothing else. But let us give you some feedback. Um, it is a big resounding 56% of people are saying no. Um, they're not looking at localized websites. Uh, they haven't done it yet. Um, they must be thinking about it because there you go, uh, there are 30% who are saying that they're thinking about it, who are going through that sort of eureka moment, that journey to get localized internationally. And 11% are fully saying that they've done it, they're online, they're out there. And with localized websites, the kind of thing that Susanna was showing for Brazil. Well, well done, the 11%. Um, for those of you who are thinking about it, great to have you with you, us, us today uh, thinking about it. There you go. That's the horn for poll number two. I'm shutting it down and I'm handing back to Susanna. Thank you very much, Susanna. Thank you very much. Um, again, we're going to go now back to Fabio, who's going to give a very, very quick overview of some of the big sectors of business opportunities in Brazil. And then hopefully we've got enough time for some case studies and uh, questions. So, Fabio. Yes, I'm here. Yes, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, Trade BRZ is a private company. I found this company uh, several years ago, like 15 years ago. Well, actually 18 years ago uh, when we first started. And, and our office today is at WTC Sao Paulo. So what we do, we, we do market research. Uh, we understand how the market works. We try to pass all the information to our clients. Uh, but what we are specialized uh, where we are specialized uh, we are specialized in, in contacting potential distributors uh, agents uh, promoting joint ventures uh, with uh, existing companies uh, eventually helping the acquisition and also uh, find funds for greenfield projects or eventually finding funds for brownfield acquisitions so we are, uh, let's say, uh, a full-service boutique firm 
uh, assisting international companies to succeed in, in this, uh, let's say, challenging market. Next slide, please. So here are a list of uh, seven uh, industries or business opportunities in Brazil. So let's go to the first slide. Life science. Okay, so uh, most of the pharmaceutical companies are located in Brazil, and we have several local ones. The the local ones they work on generic generic drugs, and they they grow. Uh, they grow like a seven percent a year, and uh, eighteen percent of their imports are from the U.S. So this is a market that grows no matter what. And also nutritional supplements, this grows like crazy, 25% per year. And uh, it's it's a phenomenon that's happening here. Uh, and if you bring like supplements, including organic or uh, certified by, by international agencies, uh, this is going to be a, a home run. In terms of medical equipment, uh, there's a, a a huge a huge demand for sophisticated medical equipment and we are not talking about uh, nuclear magnetic resonances at all we are talking about proton technology we're talking about PETCTs we're talking about robots believe it or not robots today are leased even to public hospitals that lack funds uh, so uh, the objective in, in in putting those robots in even in public hospitals that are short of funds is to provide access to delicate surgeries. So this is a growing market, and we see the trend here in Brazil switching from the acquisition of expensive uh, high-tech content equipment to the leasing of those equipment. In, in the majority of the clinics and uh, high-end hospitals. So this is a huge market. We have uh, almost 500,000 beds uh, in, in the Brazilian market. Then we have like a, a universal healthcare system in Brazil, but uh, uh, it's also a challenge to use the system. So, uh, the last statistics that we have is that 25% of the population have private plans. So they go after private clinics. Next slide, uh, Susanna. So agriculture equipment. Brazil has always been and will always be because of the land and weather and climate and, uh, and productivity of the land. One of the the leaders in terms of uh, production of grains and uh, animal protein. So this is serious business here. So all the major international companies like uh, Caterpillar, uh, John Deere, uh, Fiat, uh, Ford, uh, they have their operations here in Brazil for the production of heavy equipment. But still, we miss some of the most sophisticated equipment and and you see the adoption of drones growing uh, continuously in Brazil to do surveillance and uh, in in agricultural areas so all the high tech is very very welcome uh, to this industry and this is very very sophisticated so i would say i would dare to say that at least 60% of the brazilian territory is covered by farmland and in terms of chemicals, even though we have, uh, let's say, the, all the, 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 the Fortune 500 companies with uh, manufacturing operations in Brazil, we still miss some uh, of, of the chemicals listed on this page. So potassium chloride, insecticides, urea, ammonium. So there's a huge demand for, this, uh, for these products. Next slide, please. Aircrafts and parts, as you know, Brazil is uh, is home of Embraer, and uh, Embraer is doing very very well. It was announced six months ago 
at Boeing and Embraer, we're going to sign, uh, let's say, an agreement or an acquisition. And it looks like the deal in terms of uh, commercial aviation of uh, commercial uh, uh, aircraft is moving really, really well. And the only issue is about the defense side of Embraer. That is still under debate. But uh, we see that uh, these companies, uh, they have a long, long background of working very close. Boeing and even Airbus, they have their research centers near Embraer. So they are always looking on the shoulders of, of each one. And um, they're following very, very, very close what Embraer is doing. So uh, given the dimensions of Brazil, we have the second largest fleet of executive jets and the third largest of helicopters. And Sao Paulo has the, I think, is the city with the second largest fleet of helicopters in the world. So it's insane what we see here in terms of uh, air transportation. Next slide, please. So it's a very congested, this, this chart is very congested, but as you can see, the industry is located in the south and, and the southeast uh, of Brazil. That's where the we have a diversified industry. And uh, because of the tradition of high import duties and high taxes and uh, all the bureaucracy here, we have all Fortune 500 companies doing business. So if a company uh, is, let's say, tier four or tier five to any of these large multinationals, eventually with our assistance, they can become very close to to, to these multinational companies. Uh, a good case happened a few years ago when a tier four supplier to Electrolux came to Brazil and uh, we introduced that company directly to the purchasing manager with Electrolux. So within a week, that company moved the status from tier number four to tier number one globally. So this is possible to be done because uh, in developing countries, we have to know who is who. So we are in close contact with the president, CEOs, directors, managers of all the, the major multinational companies. And they understand uh, what we do and we are here to help them as well. Next slide. <clears throat> Um, if I can just take over for a moment, then Fabio, just really give you some views on the um, uh, online business again and for doing business in Brazil. We wanted to circle back and give you some case studies quickly. Uh, I realize we're, we're short a bit on time. Just really rounding up from our side and what we've seen um, from, from our side is really that the localized websites, these websites for Brazil, uh, for companies, allow companies to exporters to Brazil to get found. It allows them to be understood by the local population, by their prospects and their clients, and allows them to then transact and do business. So really the tool of a localized website is what enables an exporter to reach that extra mile and and and, and have an efficient, you know, great, uh, uh, building a brand and reputation in the local market, which is just so essential, especially in large markets like Brazil. Brazil has enormous, vast potential. It's already a huge market. You know, what are the tools you need? Obviously, you need in-market partners with Fabio and things, but you also need to have a fantastic website because the Brazilians in particular are very tech savvy. So, so before I give you some examples of companies we've dealt with, John, you want to launch, launch the last poll, please? Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Fabio, thank you. That was fantastic, fascinating information. And I love the way it all sits. Well, there you go, rapid in the online world. And this is what we're talking about. So the third and final poll, please lean in, share with me your views about Guess what? Social media. There you go. Launched. Do you use social media? How social media you know, savvy are you promoting your company? How about in your home market? Let's always start at the very beginning and all the export markets and the home market. And some only in the home market, which is probably you know a, a great place to be as well. But thinking about it or is it a full no? Now, let me give you a lot of the feedback from the many people here attending and enjoying this webinar. Thank you so much. 
It's, it's interesting, actually, 15% are saying yes in our home market, yes in all export markets, yes in key export markets, as well as no. Uh, 44%, who is the, uh, the big outstanding number, are using social media only in your home market. Well, well done you, you're on the road in your home market, you can see how important that is in your home market. Can you imagine applying that principle and those processes in the Brazilian economy, um, working and following up as Fabio was outlining and Susanna was saying, um, that would be really uh, quite the way to go going forward. So um, a strong recommendation to look at it here. That is the third and final poll being closed. I want to thank you so much for participating and sharing in these polls as I hand you back. Susanna, thank you so much. Thank you, John. Um, some quick, uh, just a, a brief look at some companies. These are U.S. companies that I've chosen to highlight who have put up, up Brazilian websites, Brazil dedicated localized websites that we built for them, and then the social media that goes with it. And this is an, uh, just leading on from, from, from what Fabio was saying, the strength of the avionics sector. Uh, there's a, uh, uh, an American company who started out with you know, identified their key markets, China, Japan, Brazil, uh, Mexico, and said, right, a Brazilian website, because Ombrayar is one of our big prospects. And it really has paid off very, very well for them. These localized websites have allowed their in-market partners to use the tools to engage with local prospective buyers and to say, yes, we care very much about the Brazilian market. We care so much, we actually have invested in this website. And it's it's a company that uses in-market agents a lot, and they were very, very pleased to get these extra resources and the most efficient resources for them. I mean, they, they've moved basically from little paper brochures to, to a serious, fantastic, uh, localized website uh, in Brazil. And the effect on the bottom line of the company was very quick and very dramatic. Um, all of these, by the way, as case studies, you can, if you go to our website, ibt.onl, and look at some of the success stories, you can get the videos uh, and more detail about all of this and, and uh, watch and, and, and explain from the company's perspective uh, about what success they had and why they were pleased with these localized websites. The second company I wanted to highlight is called Holland Pump. Again, it's a U.S. company, and they were very much involved in, in and said, you know, we very much involved in trying to get their their local distributors uh, uh, extra extra um, uh, leads. They they use their distributors very much as in market suppliers, logistics, uh, after market sales support, technical support. Their distributors are not good at marketing. Their distributors are not the best, and they don't. And and the company doesn't pay them to go out and market for them and and, and things like that. What they really need are serious technicians and engineers. So, what better tool to have to draw, to to generate leads than a local website? So, we created this website for them in order to generate leads and the social media that goes with it to generate leads in order to hand those then to the distributors. And I must say the distributors, the local distributors in Brazil are now extremely happy to have that flow of business coming through. Uh, you know, it's been it's been a really a, a great uh, learning experience for the company and now they're going to roll that out. And again, if you want to listen to the testimonial, it's on our website. And the third one I wanted to point out uh, really is is a more complex story in a sense. Uh, again, a US company, but this one said, you know, we have direct e-commerce requests and we need to have an e-commerce site. We said, fine, okay, build these. So we built them a Brazilian e-commerce site. They did not want to do it directly through, uh, uh, you know, they wanted to have the, 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 the opportunity of transacting directly on their website. And I have to say, Brazil is a fantastic potential market, huge for this company, but e-commerce is not for the faint-hearted in Brazil. It's a tough business. Each item has to be separately uh, um, uh, uh, registered in Brazil. Uh, so it takes a long time. It's a big, uh, a big task to get a good, seriously professional looking and acting and performing e-commerce site up. So we're very proud of, uh, of this one here. 
which is you know allows allows them to transact directly into into uh, in Brazil. And again, the absolutely important social media uh, um, campaigns that go with this in order to generate the demand and the and the and the uh, the, um, the sort of the buzz that you need for great Brazilian feedback and uptake uh, with this very social, very sociable and online and techie um, uh, market that it is. John, I've, I've rushed through a little bit, I realize, but I, I hope we have an extra few minutes for some questions at the end. Yeah, we certainly do. Um, thank you so much. Look, to everybody who's submitting questions, I want to thank you all. Keep them coming. We will get back to you. I'm going to cherry pick a few. Um, Samantha, let me get you out there. Um, this first one, I think, is an interesting one. Paul is saying, who owns the websites? It's sort of, who owns the websites? Samantha, are you there? Yes, hello, everyone. Um, first off, thank you for having me. And to answer your question, the company owns the websites. Um, even though we help create the websites, we help host them, we help you purchase the domain names, um, if you need help creating content, social media posts, whatever the case may be, IBT Online is there to help, but the company owns all the content and the websites. Thank you, Samantha. I guess that's, that's reassuring. Everybody knows that going forward, um, they belong to you, the client, the company. Fabio, let me jump on this. Steve, I don't, I just, Fabio, I don't know whether you're going to yeah. want this question, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. I, it's about officials being on strike. What's the impact on goods delivery? What is the story about the strike? At the, what, what, what is that? Well, the custom officials have actually been on strike since last October. <laughs> meaning last year, believe it or not. They are a strike for uh, pay increases. But um, actually, at the end of the day, this this has been absorbed by the by the process of clearing customs from, from uh, of clearing goods from customs. So at the end of the day, uh, they are giving priority to products that are, are, let's say, are like uh, for emergency or urgent use. So this is not creating any any sort of uh, problem in, in the custom uh, clearance. So we haven't heard, we, we know that they're on strike, but uh, at the end of the day, this is not affecting the imports to the Brazilian market at all. Uh, well, what we have to warn is, of course, we have the World Soccer Cup coming in June and July, and Brazilians are crazy about uh, soccer. So we know that during the days Brazil will play, it's going to be like uh, in total seven seven days in a row, including some weekends. So some operations may slow down during those dates. So, but that, that shouldn't uh, create a, a major issue to clear customs at all. So yes, they're on strike, but it's not affecting affecting deeply the the process of clearing goods from customs. Fabio, thank you for that. Um, that will be reassuring to know and uh, relate to the football. I think that's a wonderful observation. Yes, indeed. I think Samantha has a a wonderful story about that as well. But pressing on as I have to, uh, Susanna, somebody's obviously been hit by the GDPR, this European thing. But what about data protection in Brazil? The question is, what about data protection in Brazil? <laughs> it's a good question. Indeed, very topical given the European GDPR. Uh, Brazil actually doesn't have a bad track record on this. They've got a good track record on this. They are, the last legislation dates from mid-2016. They don't have actual uh, GDPR equivalents. They don't have full data protection, but there's a strong uh, history of, uh, of, of of data protection within the, within the legislature. And they're looking very, very closely at the European experiment with the idea of perhaps implementing it uh, in the next few years. So that's, uh, it's an interesting space to be watching, I would say, for Brazil. Lauren, I hope that answers your question. And moving on, uh, Samantha, Janet says, what's the first step in getting a Brazilian website? There you go, Samantha, first step. The first step we suggest as best practice is to own the domain name for Brazil. So that would be .com.br. However, to own a Brazilian domain name, um, 
it's it's a bit of a complicated process because you either have to have a representative in Brazil, certain um, certain numbers um, and addresses. So we help you get a .br domain name. Um, IBT Online will purchase it for you and then sell it back to you for the same price that we purchased it. Janet, there you go. And Tony, this one, um, Fabio, this one is from Tony. Tony is saying, and I guess this is um, spot on considering the map you showed of Brazil, how many distributors on average would you recommend for a company given the size of Brazil? That's exactly the question. Uh, Fabio, what's the answer? Thank you, John. Well, actually, we recommend companies not to give exclusivity to one single distributor so that they can uh, they can appoint distributors as long as there is a demand in, in certain regions. So my first question is, uh, you can have as many as you want, and um, that depends on the product or service that you are working with. So my only issue is not to give exclusivity to any distributor, otherwise you may be in a trap. If that distributor is not efficient enough, you may, may end up with a, a, a contract that's not worth the, the ink that you put in it. So uh, I, I would be very, very uh, careful in signing a distribution agreement with one single distributor. At least you have to start with one based in Sao Paulo and then one for the south of Brazil and eventually one for the northeast of Brazil. That's the minimum uh, you need to carry. And then you go and multiply based on the demand for, for each market. Fabio, thank you. So that could be sort of a minimum of three. Well, um, I hope, Tony, that that, that sort of uh, answers that question. Susanna, um, let's go for the last one as we move on um, in terms of time. Uh, Kate, I guess, has already walked down the um, online marketing road because she's saying, um, what about getting her Brazilian distributor involved in the online marketing? So, Kate, you're already there, but you're thinking about your, getting your distributor to, to, to participate. What's, what's the best thing to do, Susanna? Um, in our experience with best practice is really, yes, it's a, it's a good idea. Get your distributor involved. They often have good insights. But the trick is, and it's sort of a, a very clear line, don't let your distributor lead. Your distributor should not own your website. Your distributor should not own your social media. Uh, in that case, you're giving over your brand, your reputation, everything to someone outside your company. You own the, 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 the website, as uh, Samantha was saying, you should own the social media as well. Absolutely, you should be generating things. But your distributor can pitch in. You can say, hey, write me a little blog on this or reply on that. And very often when we're working with companies, we have this like little triangle where we're putting out social media for the company, but we'll involve the distributor. And actually, they start to like it. They don't see you as competition. They start to actually say, this is really working. It's really generating leads. Susanna, thank you. That sounds very practical. Look, um, Linda, Carmen, Marcelo, I see all of these questions. We're not going to get back to them now. We will get back to them in the days ahead, so you will be receiving emails probably from Samantha um, following this up, but also Fabio, Fabio and Susanna. Um, I'm afraid, given the time constraints, we must now close, and we want to thank everybody for joining today and participating. We hope you enjoyed the webinar. We hope that it was useful and that you feel encouraged um, to start or to further develop your business in Brazil. At IBT Online and with Fabio at Trade BRZ, you know, we understand the challenges that you face in doing business in Brazil. We do have solutions in working together, and we're here to help you and ensure your success in growing your exports, your sales, and your business in Brazil. There will be a brief survey now. It's called, guess what, doing business in Brazil. So please do give us one more minute of your time. Give us a little bit of feedback. Helps us serve you better in the future. For those of you who asked about the slide deck, it will be with you, with you on Friday. So watch out for your email box. Now, what I want to do is I want to thank Fabio. Thank you so much. I want to thank um, Susanna and Samantha for doing a great job. Um, here you go. Here's a little bit. That's applause. There you go. That's the audience saying thank you very much indeed.
Thank you so much for being and joining us. We wish you every success in doing business in Brazil. And thank you again for joining us. And bye-bye and over and out from us doing business in Brazil today.